Hello, everyone. Welcome to Tonal Talk. Thank you for joining. My name is Kate. I am your community manager coming to you live from my brand new garage gym. Um, let's see. I think it still might be a black box. Oh, no. There we go. We're there. OK, so today we're going to be discussing The Miracle Morning, the read between the reps first book pick. So Read Between the Reps is our new book club, the Tonal Book Club, and we're discussing The Miracle Morning, our first January pick with Coach Action Jackson. But before we do that, I want to give you some announcements, uh, some updates from Tonal. So as most of you saw, we have the year in review that our team has been working really hard to bring you. It is so cool. If you go into the mobile app and go scroll all the way down, you can see your 2020 year in review. Click that. It's going to give you some really cool stats about the last 52 weeks weeks that you had with Tonal, or maybe less if you just joined us. But um, it's going to tell you who you worked out with most. Mine was Coach Jackson, uh, what workouts you did, how your strengths for improved. It's a very, very fun feature. So make sure you find that and share it with us in the community so we can cheer you on and all your success. Coach Liz has a new program out. It is called Starting Out with Tonal. So it is the perfect program if you are new to the Tonal family. Definitely check that out. It's four days a week. She's going to answer all of your questions about how to move the arms, the dynamic weight modes, best practices for Tonal. She's going to educate you more than you could ever imagine. Definitely, definitely start there if you are new to Tonal. It's going to be such a great overview, four times a week, full body. It's going to get you ramp up nice and easy. Um, we also, I just want to talk to you about Coach Nicolette's Raising the Barbell 2 Challenge. Many of you are already in it. It started the, first, or the fourth of the month on Monday, but it's not too late to join if you, you know, aren't too scared by everyone's posts that's coming out of it. Oh my goodness, it is so hard. I am so sore, but I'm getting stronger and it's so fun doing it with everyone. There's virtual group workouts every week. She does a Facebook Live Q&A if you have questions, and there's just a ton of camaraderie in there. So don't be shy. It's not too late. You can search on Facebook for Coach Nicolette's Raising the Barbell 2 Challenge, and you'll find it, or I'm sure someone will share the link with you. But join in if you are looking for a program and looking to make some friends and looking to be a little sore. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about Read Between the Reps, The Miracle Morning. I want to tell you a little bit about how the book club is structured and to let you know that this is the first time we're doing this. So this might all change. I'm eager to hear your feedback and hear what you want and how you like what we're doing. And so we can tweak it as we go. But for now, the idea is to do a kickoff like we're doing right now, let you all know about the book and why we chose it. And then throughout the month on the first on the Monday of every week, um, I'll put up a thread that will ask you some questions that pertain to the first third or fourth of the book, depending on how many Mondays there are in the month. Um, and just thought questions. You can answer all of them. You can answer some of them. You can answer them in your own journal. You can answer them publicly, totally up to you, but just kind of get the juices flowing and do a little bit of reflection together as a community on the book. So those will be every Monday. And then at the end of the month, we'll all come together in a Zoom call, which I've been loving doing the Zoom calls with you guys. It's so fun to actually get to see you on, on the other side of the screen. Um, so then we'll do a Zoom call where we just discuss our experience reading the book. In this case, it'll be the experience of actually doing the morning routine. Um, for February, I am going to have you all vote on the book, so you will get to have a little bit of input on which book we select. But now, let's invite the guest of honor to come on to Tonal Talk. We have Coach Action Jackson. Action Jackson's Action Jackson Blower's combination of mindset, motivation, and actionable advice pushes you to become the most sculpted version of yourself. He has a background in data science, and he's known for his no-nonsense analytical approach to health and fitness. Many of you have sweat with him in his popular tonal programs, Go Big or Go Home, or Four Weeks to Fat Loss. He has many others, but those are the ones that keep rising to the top. Coach Jackson is a huge propon proponent of creating a morning routine, and today we'll be talking about how he implemented the morning miracle into his life and the impact it has had. So please help me welcome Coach Action Jackson. How are you doing, Jackson? Fantastic after that intro. Can you <laughs> intro me like every time I wake up in the morning, like every time I walk into a room? Like <laughs> That can be part of our morning routines. We'll just call each other and like pump each other up. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm going to take this recording and I'm just going to listen to it every morning when I wake up. Like, oh, that's who I am. Okay. 
<laughs> I love that. You are Action Jackson. So uh, thank you for joining us today. I actually found the Miracle Morning because of you. Um, you did a weekly pause back in July, which was all about what you call the positivity primer. And it's about how you start your day. And you said that you got a lot of your inspiration from the Morning Miracle. So it took me, what, six months to read the book, but I did. <laughs> and I was like, this would be perfect for the community, which is how we're here today. And we're going to talk a little bit more about why this book is so great to start the year with. But um, in the book, Hal Elrod, the author, he talks about two of his rock bottom moments. And I'm not going to give it away for people who haven't read the book yet, but they're pretty, I mean, wow, he's been through a lot. And um, I wanted to, and, and that's kind of what led him to do all this research on the most successful people in the world, what their morning routines are. And he kind of came up with this formula. But I was wondering for you, what led you to be like, hey, you know what? I need a morning routine. I need to figure this out. I need to buy the morning mir miracle morning. What was that moment for you? Sure. So I had just moved to San Francisco. I wanted to start my own personal training business. I was trying to get started. I was struggling. I was broke. Um, and I was listening to the Tim Paris podcast a lot. Uh, which was very popular uh, back then. And he constantly would ask people about their morning routine. And from all these people who are obviously incredibly successful, they all mentioned how they had some type of primer, morning ritual, morning routine. They had these habits, these things they did every single day to help them get set to crush their day and, and really get things done. And I was just waking up, you know, you do the same thing. You wake up, you check your phone, text messages, social media, what's on the news, what's this, what's that. And then, oh, oh I got to respond to this. I got to respond to this email. I got to do this. I got to do that. And next thing you know, you didn't get anything done for yourself. And you're just in this like negativity spiral and this like reactive mindset. So by taking control of your day, one of the things that I learned is by taking control of that day right from the get go. You're probably going to lose a little control midday, you know, as things kind of go on. But that's that's OK. At least you have control over that beginning of your day so you can start off on the right foot and get certain things done. You can prioritize and you can put yourself in the right mindset to really have a great day. And I think mindset more than anything is really what the Miracle Morning is all about, getting you in the right mindset to be successful. We talk about it with our workouts all the time. you got to prime your mind and your body. This is priming your mind. So it's really what it's all about. It's like the warm up for your day. We have a warm up for every workout. This is the warm up for your day. And your life is made of all these tiny moments and they add up to a lot. And we start, we create the momentum for these days with our the first hour or however long you want to spend. And we'll talk about that. But that actually answers my second question. My second question was why mornings? Because can you do an evening routine? Can you do a midday routine? But you summed it up. You said, you know, it's it's much easier to start control, start your day with intention than it is to pick up intention midday or down the road, right? Yeah, the morning works best for a couple of reasons. Number one, that's usually when people are gonna have less demands on themselves. So if you wake up early enough and I get up at like 4.45 to 5 a.m., usually you're not gonna have a lot of texts or emails or other things coming at you at that time. Yeah. So that's one positive thing, especially if you have kids or you have a family, maybe you're the only one up. So that's a really good reason why to get up early and have a routine in the morning is because you don't have quite as many demands coming at you. As you know, tonal people sending you emails and you're getting slack and you're getting this. Well, if you get up early enough, you're not gonna have those distractions. So there's less distractions in the morning. Your willpower, which is something that depletes across the day, is also going to be highest early in the morning. And then the last thing, just like the saying, woke up on the wrong side of the bed, you have the chance, you have the chance to define that and set that up from the get-go so that you can set the tone for the rest of your day to have a good one. Because we all know those days where you start off bad and things just compoundingly get worse, well, that's that's called momentum and that's a trend, and you're attracting that into you. But if you can start positive and start the day off really good, you're going to have that opposite effect. You're going to start off at a high and maybe things don't stay at that high, but hey, at least you're at that high at some point for the day. <laughs> That's very true. That's very true. Um, and so you just said 445, you get up. That wasn't lost on me. Um, have you always been a morning person or did you intentionally say, I'm going to become a morning person and I'm going to start getting up at 445? Is it natural for you? 
It's not natural for me, but when I was, uh, I went to private all boys Catholic school and the bus picked us up at 6.15. So I had to get up early, even back in high school. And then when I played baseball in high school during the season, we'd have morning practices. So I'd have to be at school by 6 a.m. So I'd have to get up even earlier. So I've been getting up for a large portion of my time early, uh, even though I never felt like I was necessarily a morning person. But trust me, you can transform yourself into a morning person. So there's been periods in my life where I haven't gotten up early and I said, you know what? I need to get back to that. And I just find when I get up early and I get after it in the morning and get that routine in, I, number one, I feel fantastic. Number two, I feel so productive. I feel like so much better about myself and what I'm doing, which is great. That puts you in, a, in the mindset to be successful and get things done. And it also changes the way people respond to you and a number of other things. But it's just so much better to start the day off like that because when you wake up late and then you don't have that routine, you don't have that structure, things are just chaotic from the get-go and chaos breeds more chaos. That's right. That's absolutely. Well, I haven't always been a morning person, but yeah. anybody who's listening who says, Jackson, I'm not a morning person. You can make yourself a morning person with this routine because I don't always wake up in a great mood with tons of energy. But when I finish this, I'm ready to crush things. It's hard to imagine you not waking up in a great mood with lots of energy, but I'll trust you. I'll take your word for it. Maybe I'll make it <laughs> chime in and tell us the truth. <laughs> talk to my parents and, and talk to Anya. There's like everybody knows that normally before I was doing this routine, or if I don't do this routine, you don't want to talk to me for like the first hour of the day. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm like silent. <laughs> yeah, it is funny. Morgan's been telling me that. I've been a lot nicer since I've started doing this. And yeah. um, I think, I don't know if she's watching, but maybe she can she can chime in too. She says she wishes there were an evening routine for me because it tends to wear off around two or three, she says. <laughs> oh my God, that's, that's great. <laughs> it does make you a better person, but it might, it depends how long, how many hours you get out of it. <laughs> but I also, I don't want to scare everyone. You don't have to get up at 4.45 to do this. No. Um, Hal has a ton of great ideas for how you can make it a six minute routine. You can fit it into your life. I'm not going to give it all away, but don't say oh, 445. I'm out. I'm not going to read it. I've been getting up at six. That's very early for me. And um, it's been fun. I've actually been loving it. Like, I can't believe I'm even saying that because I used to have to drag myself out of bed early for clients. I mean, you know, you've got early clients. I used to have a 6 a.m. client and I would just dreaded it. I loved her, but I dreaded <laughs> training her that early. And now I'm getting up that early on my own willingly and I'm enjoying it and it's putting me in the right mindset for the day. And it's just been a really, really, really wonderful experience so far. I'm a weekend. We'll see if I'll keep it up. I'm going to keep it up for the 30 days and then I'm, I'm going to see if I transition the routine, but so far so good. Yeah. And I had initiated that routine when I was training in San Francisco. So I did have those early morning clients like you're talking about. And any personal trainer or fitness pro knows like getting up for that 6 a.m. client is usually the worst. They could be the nicest person in the world, but when you're waking up early to go train somebody else, it's usually just not something fun. And I felt like I wasn't giving my clients my best because my 9, my 10 a.m. clients or my 4 p.m. clients, they got a better Jackson than my 6 a.m. client. I was, I was pretty quiet. Uh, I didn't talk a lot. I just wasn't in a great mood. I was kind of drinking my coffee. And I felt like these people are paying me way too much money in, in order to do this. This is not fair to them. Yeah. But that's when I was like, I really need to initiate this routine. So I started waking up earlier, which wow. sounds crazy. But I, I sort of, and it just started with 15 minutes earlier, not crazy, but 15 mm -hmm. minutes earlier to do that a little bit of me work mm -hmm. that then got me in a place where I was okay to go give somebody else their time. And my clients definitely noticed a big difference. They were like, wow, you're nicer. You're more talkative. Like what happened? And I was like, morning routine. Was that, was that one of the more unexpected benefits that you received from implementing this or are there other things as well? There are so many incredible benefits to doing this. I cannot tell you like this is life changing. And I know I say that about a lot of things, but this really <laughs> is. One, really. This <laughs> is because you could take all those cool things that I've talked about in the past on many of these other talks or, or weekly pauses or whatever that I say are life changing. And you could take those things and put them into this morning routine and make it your own. Mm -hmm. And like you said, don't scare people. I tell my clients, start waking up 10 minutes earlier, not an hour earlier, start 10 minutes earlier and start with a five to 10 minute routine. Mm -hmm. Just do one or two small things, a 
a little bit of movement, maybe some stretching. Maybe it's just putting on your favorite song and just kind of getting in the zone and rocking out for five minutes. You could literally do almost anything that is positive that's going to put you in a little bit of a good mood that's not checking your phone that's not social media and that's not the news anything else yeah. stretching movement it doesn't have to be a full workout do five minutes of stretching do a yoga bite with francis yeah. do a quick you know whatever on tonal listen to your favorite song just do some stretching meditate for five minutes journal for five minutes you can pick whatever it is i like to watch motivational youtube videos in the morning that's part of my routine is I'll listen to those while I'm doing a little bit of movement and stuff. Any of those things can really be fantastic and just set you, like I said, set the tone, put you in the right mindset for that next thing. So now that transition you make to whatever it is that's next, whether it's work, working out, um, you know, anything, interacting with your family, you're going to be in such a better spot to do it. Mm -hmm. I love it. Um, and I really want to stress to people, like you just said, you know, Take something that you enjoy. Don't make it this big, scary monster of a thing that's an hour long and you're cramming. He, he gives you, he calls it the savers. And there's seven things, I think it's I think it's seven, um, things that you should do. And But he also says, like, take one of them. Take your favorite one and do it for 10 minutes to start. And then just let it grow from there. Don't let perfection get in the way of you doing this. And I actually have a quote. Um, so one of the things you're supposed to do is read. And um, I have been really enjoying getting back to reading. I didn't have a book, so I just grabbed one on my shelf and it's Daring Greatly by Brene Brown. I've been really liking it. But there's a quote in here written by actually Gretchen Rubin who wrote The Happiness Project. And she says, I remind myself, don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. A 20 minute walk that I do is better than the four mile run that I don't do. The imperfect book that gets published is better than the perfect book that never leaves my computer. The dinner party of takeout Chinese food is better than the elegant dinner that I never host. So two minutes of affirmations, meditation, five minutes of stretching is better than just getting up, checking your phone and going in straight into panic mode. 1000%. I cannot emphasize that more. And being a perfectionist, this is something I've constantly struggled with. So when I read the book, I was like, oh, I need to do these seven things and it needs to be an hour. And then that lasts for two or three days. And then you're like, oh, and then you throw in the towel and you're like, I'm such a failure. The best thing that you can do is start so small, like stupid small, so small that you can't fail. Set yourself up for success. Even if you're like, oh, what can I possibly accomplish in five minutes? You'll see. And when you do that consistently, consistency is gonna be way better than having an unrealistic routine that you do once or twice a week. Like anything that you can do five to seven days a week, ideally, right, is gonna be way better, even if it's five minutes, than doing an hour twice a week. Yep, yep, and um, I like what you said about setting yourself up for success, like creating a plan. Before I started this on the first of the month, I had like a few like prep days, and I thought about the things that I needed, the things that were stopping me from doing this, and one of them was that I hate hate, hate being cold. Like I hate it. I left New Hampshire when I was 18. I moved to Texas. I lived in Southeast Asia. Like I hate being cold and it's cold here in LA in the mornings. I don't care what anyone says. And it is. I, I will attest to that. It can get down to like 38 degrees. Yeah, I'm like, Morgan, we need to move further South. It turns out. <laughs> so I might come to you live from Mexico next week. <laughs> but, um, so I put slippers next to my bed in my bathrobe and I actually showed on my Instagram that I did my exercise portion of my morning miracle in my bathrobe because it was still cold and I didn't want to take it off, but that was better than not doing it. And I also got a space heater so that I could be warm because I knew I wasn't going to get out of bed and go into a cold room and do things like I just, it wasn't going to happen. So I kind of thought about what my barriers might be. And then I started taking them down even before I even committed to doing my routine. So it took, took me a little bit of prep, but I got there and it's, I've been warm in the mornings and I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah. I think that's a really important point. What you just mentioned was doing that self-awareness, that analysis of what's really stopping me because most people don't go to that level mm -hmm. or they're not really conscious of the actual how small and almost seemingly stupid some things are that stop them, right? Being cold was stopping you from doing this whole morning routine. And that's so easily solvable when you really think through it and say, oh, this is what's stopping me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I had been trying to wake up earlier 
I was like, yeah, I'm going to get up early for so long, but I didn't have a plan around it and I didn't have a reason why. And so I was just like, nah, nah, I'm going to hit that snooze button, stay in bed. And I'm going to, you know, cuddle with my dogs and with Morgan. And that's so much better and so much more fun. But now I'm like, okay, I have a why. I created a plan with Morgan about who's going to take care of the dogs. We have our intentional cuddle time set aside. Like we, we, we figured it out. And so I just encourage everyone to really think about your intention of why you were even attracted to this book when I posted it and what you think you're going to get out of it. Um, and just like journal on that for a little bit so that you actually have that internal motivation to do it and to, to and, and he'll walk you through some of that too in the book, but it's just it's a big takeaway for me. And that could be day one of your morning routine is take five minutes and journal about why you want to do this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. So do you do this every single day, like vacations? What about when you're sick? Like what if you have like special events? Like do you always do it or there's some days where it just doesn't happen? So I used to only do it on typically on work days, but recently and probably the last, I would say six months, I started incorporating breath work into it. And I've been talking about this in the community a bit. Like mm -hmm. I hired a breathing coach, like I've been going ham on breathing and I love it. And it really like take, it took my miracle morning to like the next level where it's like, whoa, like I don't even need caffeine or coffee or anything in the morning. I feel awake and alive and I just feel so good. So I started doing this every single day. Um, but even if it's only for five minutes, I'm doing some type of at least breath work. Now, if I have like a regular day, like today, for example, I did a little bit of movement. I did some listening to some positive uh, YouTube videos, positive messaging. I like to get that in my brain first thing in the morning. Then I did my breathing and then I did like um, a little bit of gratitude exercise. And that took roughly about 20 to 25 minutes total for all of that. Mm -hmm. Today was like a big day for that though. I was like very structured, had everything set up. But on the weekends where things are a little bit less structured, I might only do five to 10 minutes of, of just breath work and that's it. But for me, like that has been so helpful. That out of all the things has been like a linchpin that seems to just be such a big, like just huge mover for me positively, which has been awesome. I love doing the breath work in the morning. Let's jam on that for a minute because I also do breath work in the morning and I want to know what you're doing and see if I need to change mine up. So tell me, what are you doing? Sure. So I used to, I started experimenting with Wim Hof, as most people do. Then I got into this um, book called Oxygen Advantage, and I started raising my CO2 tolerance. And uh, what I ended up kind of falling to, which I love, and this is free, is an app called XPT Life, which is by Laird Hamilton and Gabby Reese. So okay. they worked with this guy named Patrick McEwen, whose books I read. And he, you know, he had some books and stuff, but he wasn't very famous yet. Obviously, Gabby Reese and Larry Hamilton are very famous. So they made an app using all of his methods and teaching it. So they literally walk you through the breath work where you literally hear Gabby or you hear La uh, Laird or one of their other coaches walk you through, say, all right, now we're breathing through the nose, out through the mouth, in through the nose, out through the mouth. And you hear them breathing too. And there's music in the background. It's very like sort of inspiring and like, you know, it's fun and it just gets you in such a good mood, uh, but it really gets your body primed physically. You change your physiology, you change your mind, right? Action's the difference. This is the case. You do the breath work, you put the action, it's going to be a differentiator for you, not only physically, but also mentally with the mindset. So XPT Life, for anybody that wants to get into breath work, they have ones that are three minutes and they have ones that are 45 minutes. So you can get started with very simply with that and it's free, which is awesome. I can't wait to check that out. Thank you. All right. Well, um, I wanted to talk to you about what was the, out of the savers that he talks about in the mirror of morning, which one was the most challenging for you and how did you overcome that? Because I'll tell you what the most challenging one was for me after. And I've had a few people in the comments also say that it's challenging for them. So we'll talk about that too. So when, you, when you're saying that, what do you mean by the savers? I'm sorry, refresh my memory. Uh, so it's scribing, which is journaling, uh, yes. um, affirmations, visualizations, exercise, reading, and silence. I mixed up silence and scribing. Got oh, it. Then. Okay. So sorry, I need a slight refresher there. <laughs> uh, I think the thing that I typically, what I learned as I was going through this process was I tried to do like all of them. And kind of, as we mentioned, I struggled with that. The one that I didn't want to do and that I kind of, and most people would be surprised maybe is the exercise is I don't do the exercise as part of my morning routine. And the reason being is that 
I obviously love exercise. And if I include exercise as part of my morning routine, then I just go for hours. And then next thing I know, my morning routine is like two hours. So that doesn't work for me. And I also notice then by the time I finish not only doing the morning, the miracle morning, but then if I add the exercise piece on top of it, it always has to be that last piece. By the time I finish all that and then I get to my desk, it's kind of almost worn off. Yeah. So for me, I like to do I like to do the other things and then I actually exclude the exercise. And at most, I'll do now the breath work or at most I'll do maybe a little bit of a stretch routine, but I don't do a full workout in the morning because it just takes me, you know, I'm working out for anywhere between 60 to 90 minutes. It's just too long for me. His, I know in the book, he talks about like maybe 20 minutes of working out. That's yeah, anything like you could do a minute of pushups, anything. So yeah, yeah. he's not saying yeah, so I just cut it down and I just do yeah. the breath work instead, or maybe a little bit of a stretch as, as opposed to if I start doing pushups, that's going to lead to <laughs> pushups, which will lead to the uh, 50 squats and it just snowballs for me. So I actually like to work out later in the afternoon. Yeah. And I like to do the morning routine and keep the exercise to the afternoon because then that way I can sit down at my desk and I could really get after my work with that level of energy really high. And then when I need an afternoon boost, that's when I go and do my workout on tonal. And then I got the afternoon burst. I got those endorphins and then I can finish up the day. Mine's similar. I've been adding in 20 minutes of mobility or yoga and it's been such a game. And I, I made, or Morgan helped me make a special Miracle Morning playlist on Apple Music that I play oh, and do it. Absolutely. Music really helps. It just like transforms the the moment. I, I just yeah. need to a different place. It's been so fun. And I've been be it like really loosening up my body because I've been so sore from raising the barbell too. Um, and so, and I'm doing, I'm trying out all these new coaches and I've actually been testing out some pre-release content that I'm really excited to share with everyone, but it's just been, it's just felt so good in my body. And I just, it's been a game changer for me, but I will say the one that I have struggled with is actually two. And I, uh, Susan Johns Campbell and Trisha also said that they're struggling with these are affirmations and visualization for me. Um, Hal does take you through a little exercise. He actually gives a resource on his website that um, that it's kind of like this journaling thing that you do to go through your process. I highly recommend that. I'll link to it in the comments. Um, that And he gives like a process for coming up with your affirmations. But I still feel like I could use some help on this. Do you have any advice for us on the affirmations portion? Sure. I could give advice on, on both of them. So I'll start with the visualization, then I'll move to the aff affirmation. So the visualization, if you want to get started with visualization, you're like, oh, I don't know what to do. This feels hokey or this feels stupid. The best thing that you can do is go on YouTube and search for Tony Robbins emotional flood. And I've done these as like weekly pauses before where I walk people through them, but obviously nobody better than the master Tony himself. And there's music and he talks, walks you through exactly how to do this gratitude visualization exercise. And it will bring tears to your eyes. Like you will be sobbing by the end of it if you haven't done it before. Okay. It's awesome. And it's only five minutes, I think, in 30 seconds. Oh. So you can spare five minutes to practice some visualization. And that is the best way to get started with visualization. There's lots of ways that you can go from there that I can dive into. But that's going to be the starting point if you're somebody who struggles with visualizations. Like this is stupid or it feels weird or I don't know how to do this if I'm doing it right. Okay. That would be affirmation things i like to think of um doing them either first thing in the morning or actually right before bed and i i, I honestly have found i get better use out of affirmations right before bed so uh, i started doing this when i was trying to build my personal training business i would go to bed and i would say things like money comes to me in in abundance i would say things like you're a hundred thousand dollar personal trainer i would say things like you have a full roster of clients and just condition my mind before bed so that my subconscious could go to work on it. And then I wake up and then it's like, okay, like that all happened. And you just I, told me before this call that you have a full roster of personal training clients. So I, I do. All of it has, has come true. <laughs> <laughs> but but I find before bed, I like doing that. And it puts a smile on my face. It kind of puts me in a good mood as I'm kind of hitting the pillow and laying down. Um, so I like affirmations at night personally a little bit more in the morning but in the morning i do affirmations i actually write them down and i've done that before there's a great interview on the tim ferris podcast to mention that again uh with the guy who created dilbert i can't remember his name but whoever the guy that created dilbert is and he what he said was um 
that there's this powerful technique that if you do it, it's kind of an affirmation technique that you can have literally anything. And he said he wrote down and he would write it down every single day. He wrote down 15 times that he had like a international best selling or, you know, whatever comic strip. And he would write that down every day, 15 times every morning. Mm -hmm. And that is the type of affirmation that I prefer is actually writing down it versus just saying it. And there's a couple of reasons. One, it feels more real. It really conditions it. And while you're writing, it takes longer to write. You're really thinking through this and you're visual and then you're visualizing all the things that are happening. So I would write down, you, you have a hundred thousand dollar personal training business. I would literally write that down and I'd write it down 15 times in the morning as part of my routine. And then you could ask the question then from there, well, does that really work Jackson? And th the theory is either that works or anybody who's crazy enough to write down what they want 15 times every morning is the type of person that's crazy enough to do whatever it is that's going to right, get the result. Right. So I don't know if it's chicken or the egg, but it works. Right. I can tell you that for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that. Okay. And you think it's best to focus on just one at a time? Because if you did five affirmations 15 times each, I mean, we'd be there all morning. Correct. So I wouldn't do five at most I've ever done two or three. And then I wouldn't do obviously 15 times for each of those. I would do like five, five, five. You have to remember also with focus, it's the same thing on tonal. You don't pick build muscle, build strength and burn fat and build endurance and increase flexibility all at the same time. You, you got to prioritize. Mm -hmm. So you got to think of what are the one to three things that I really want to achieve or, or have in my life. Typically, that's going to be a health, a wealth, um, health, wealth, and maybe a personal or a relationship goal, right? So you can pick one thing with your body, you yep. can pick one thing with your business, your finances, and you can pick one thing from a relationship standpoint. And then those are your affirmations. You say them before bed as if they are certain and you already have them. Like it's it's happened. There's no doubt about it. It's not, I want this. It's thank you for this. Yeah. It's I have this. I am this. And it's the same thing in the morning when you write it down. Not, I want a $100,000 personal training business. I have a $100,000 personal training business. Thank you, God, universe, whatever you believe in. Thank you for giving this to me. I already have it. Now, I just have to do the, the action steps to get it into my life because it's already there. Well, let's challenge the community right now to get serious about these affirmations. Write down an affirmation in the comments and hit that send button. Challenge yourself right now to be a little vulnerable and put yourself out there and start that energy. So let, let's see, let's see who does it. Um, I love that idea. Yeah, let's let's take action, right? We're we're with Action Jackson. We got to take right. action. That's how it goes. <laughs> um, yeah. So for me, it would be written affirmations in the morning and then. Like, like thinking through them at night before bed. That is a fantastic way to bookend your day with your affirmations. Well, get ready, Morgan. I'm going to start yelling my affirmations. And you have to, like, you have to say them with certainty, like you believe, not like, oh, I mean, I have a hundred thousand dollar. No, I have a hundred thousand dollars. Like, you have to say it with certainty, confidence. You're certain of it. It's already happened. It already has happened. I will not let my outer world dictate my inner world. I love it, Elizabeth. That's awesome. So good. I have survived the Raise the Bar 2 program. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my affirmation too, honestly. I don't know how to do this next workout. And Kingman says that she visualizes her tonal workout for the next day before bed. I love that. I'm going to start doing that for Raising the Bar Bell too. Yes. That is such a great idea. I tell my clients to do that all the time. I have this saying with my clients, which is, uh, the will to win is not nearly as important as the will to prepare to win. And you prepare for your workout the day before by looking at what you're going to be doing, looking at the exercises, thinking through it a little bit, um, watching any exercise or demo videos if you need that. But when you do that, you're going to visualize what you're doing. You're going to see every move, every step of the way. And then your subconscious is going to go to work. And then when you show up for your workout, it's no longer, what am I doing? What is this? What is, oh, I didn't know this was next. Oh, and I didn't know how to do this move. Like, let me watch the demo. No, you already have that all in place. Yeah. Now is your time to just execute at your best. I want to read some more of these. They're amazing. I will quiet my inner voice. My main affirmation right now is I am patient. Yes. <laughs> Morg says, oh, wonderful. My body is a temple that can run and perform maximally. I love that. 
Um, <laughs> I will wake up at 6 a.m. and stretch. Morgan, I will hold you to that. I am calm and have amazing strength and mobility. I am financially independent. Yes, girl, slay. I will find a positive in everyone. Russell, that is beautiful. I love, oh my gosh, this is the best tunnel talk ever. <laughs> Somebody mentioned one and they say, I will sleep through the night and I will not have insomnia. Mm. You don't say what you don't want. No, 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 no. You don't That's say no that. Bad. It's like a race car driver doesn't look at the wall and go, don't hit the wall, don't hit the wall, don't hit the wall, because then they run into the wall. Mm. So you don't say what you don't want. You only focus on what it is that you do want or going to achieve. Not, I don't have insomnia. You're, you're saying what you do want, which is, I'm going to sleep quietly through the night and I'm not going to wake up once. So don't even mention the insomnia. You do not mention the negative. I no, I no longer have anxiety because then you're going to have that anxiety. So we don't want to attract that negative in. Correct. You do not want to have any focus, even if it's you're trying to do a negative. Like you do not want any focus on the thing that you want. Yeah. You got to flip it around and make it a positive for sure. Beautiful. Um, okay. So. You talk a little bit about how you switch up your morning routine a bit. Like it's not the same every day, right? So you kind of have like, you you went through and did the savers and then you kind of picked and chose and now you mold it into kind of what you're feeling for that day, right? Is, do I have that right? Correct. So there's always going to, you have to think of it as an evolving process. It is somewhat fluid. It's somewhat dynamic, meaning at different stages of your life, you're going to want to include different things. You're going to find something new and you're going to throw that in there. And you're going to really like it. And maybe you'll take something else out, but then it also has to be flexible enough to go from five, maybe three or five minutes all the way up to 20 minutes. If that's something that you want. I love when I have 20 to 25 minutes to do this, but I don't always have that. Um, so when I was you know, over Christmas vacation, I'm spending time with other people, or if you're doing something else, maybe, I know not right now, but people are traveling sometimes, you don't always have that 20 minutes of dedicated time when you're just by yourself to do this. So you have to have an adaptive routine and you got to say, what am I gonna do if I only have five minutes? You gotta know what you're gonna do because you can't take five minutes to figure it out. You gotta have that planned already. I think it's worth saying like, okay, this is my miracle morning. If I have an hour, this is my miracle morning. If I have 20 minutes and this is it, if I have five minutes and making that again, preparing, making that plan so that you know exactly what's going to happen. And you know, the night before you go to bed, like, okay, tomorrow is, it's, it's a five minute day. Tomorrow it's a 30 minute day. And so there's no guesswork. There's no running around. There's no starting the day in a chaotic space, because as we talked about, it's really hard to dig your way out of that chaotic energy field. Whereas, you want to go in strong, positive, confident, and like let that carry you float on that throughout the rest of the day. Yeah, there's a certain thing that I teach with with, with regard to like when what when statements, and these are incredibly powerful. They make it like something like 90% more likely that you're gonna follow follow through and do something. So you say what you're gonna do and you say when you're gonna do it, and then there's an addition to that. You can go if then. So you you say Tomorrow morning at 6 a.m., I'm going to wake up, and at 6.15, I'm going to start my morning routine, and I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. You're very specific with it. That makes it highly likely that you're going to follow through with it because you don't want to be a liar to yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to be a liar. So you're going to follow through, and you're going to do it. It's very specific, and you already know then what you're going to do. And then you could throw in those if-then statements. If I am insomnia and I'm struggling, I'm going to drink an extra cup of coffee before I do my morning routine. Or maybe you say, if this happens, if work makes a, make a work call, then I'm going to do my routine at this point. But you have those conditions that you can build in so you know what you're going to do, you know when you're going to do it, and you know if something happens, how you're going to overcome that obstacle ahead of time. I think that's the most important part is planning for those curveballs. And it's not like they're total curveballs. 90% of the time, we it's happened before. We know we can kind of predict that it's, knocked us off our game before if you just sit sure. and think through the reasons why you haven't followed through with things or why you haven't done the things that you said you were going to do you can kind of pinpoint you know themes or specific instances like my kids are going to come in the room my kids going to get sick like all the things that could happen plan for those write out little plans for what your game plan is if and when that happens because you know it's going to happen eventually not every day is going to be the perfect miracle morning day so Let's plan for it. So then let's prepare. Yeah. And it's because it's the morning. The great thing is there's going to be less of those kind of obstacles and things that happen. Mm -hmm. So I know if I wake up and I, for whatever reason, if 
there's other people around or I'm on vacation or something and I maybe don't have as much time to do it with, with, by myself, I know if I have five minutes, okay, I'm either doing one, you know, one of the XPT life breath works that are five minutes or less, or I'm going to do my Tony Robbins emotional flood if I'm kind of feeling down. One of those two things, if I only have five minutes, I already know that going in. I don't know how you, you aren't drinking water. I've been drinking a gallon of water a day um, and it's been so good. I thought it would be hard and it really hasn't been hard. But that brings me to another point. Um, boost your metabolism by when you drink 500 milliliters, milliliters of water, boost your metabolism up to 30%. Look at that. Temporary. Am it's I temporary, drinking? but yeah. it's incredible. Drinking water is the hidden fat loss key. It's like incredible. Well, cheers. <laughs> um, but we were talking about kind of planning for, you know, the curveballs. And there was a quote that Hal wrote in the book that really struck me. And he says, changing your life, it begins with accepting total responsibility for every aspect of your life and refusing to blame anyone else. The degree to which you accept responsibility for everything in your life is precisely the degree of personal power you have to change or create anything in your life. And that just struck me. And I was like, damn, that's kind of a drop the mic moment where you just sit and you're like, okay, yeah, no, it's not my boss's fault. It's not my kid's fault. It's not my dog's fault. It's my fault because I set, I didn't set the boundaries right or whatever. But then on the flip side, it's also like, I have a lot of amazing things in my life and a lot of things going right. And I am also responsible for that. And so you, it doesn't have to be this negative burden kind of quote. It can also be really empowering. And I just, um, I thought on that for a while and then I journaled about it in, in my morning, miracle morning. <laughs> I love that. So that reminds me a lot of Jocko Willink who wrote the book Extreme Ownership, which I talk about quite a bit. So that's an entire book on extreme ownership. And uh, this, is, this is funny. So a lot of you have seen my fiance, Anya. She got in a ski accident. Oh, yeah. Somebody hit her from behind and she tore her ACL. And this is classic me. I said, if you had to say it was your fault and, and take ownership, what would you say like, is, is, is to blame for you in this one? And is that when she <laughs> impaled you with her ski pole? <laughs> I, I waited a couple days. Trust me, I, I waited a couple days. But I said, if you had to say this was your fault, what would you say that your role in all of this was? Because otherwise, you feel like such a victim, and then you feel like you don't have control. Mm -hmm. For me, I dealt with this just recently, where I got a tax bill for six grand, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh my god, I got this tax bill for six thousand dollars. And you know, you look at it, you don't really understand it quickly, and your emotions are going, and all of a sudden you get that fight or flight, and you're like, ah, ah. and I call my accountant, and he doesn't answer, and I text him, and he doesn't respond, and I start freaking out, and I'm freaking out for like two or three days, and I'm I'm literally laying there. It's 1 a.m. and I can't sleep, and I finally got up and I said, you know what? Ownership. This is my fault. These are my taxes, not my accountant's fault. I hired him. This is on me. I have to take responsibility. I have to figure this out. So I took ownership. Then I took action. I got up. I got to my desk. I went through it. I understood, okay, this is what's happening. This is why. I looked through my 2019 and my 2018 returns and figured out exactly what was wrong. And then I knew what the next step was. And that gave me such a sense of calm, even though I haven't completely solved the problem yet. I know exactly what the next step is. I know exactly why this is happening. And that level of ownership and then action following it up is just incredible for like giving you momentum, getting you excited, but giving you this sense of calm that now comes because you're not in that fighter's flight, like victim mentality where you're just feeling like the world is happening to you. It's not. The world is happening for you. And that's something, again, referring back to Anya, we've had a lot of conversations about. Why is this happening? Not because the world is against you, not because you're just unlucky. No, this is happening for a reason and you need to figure out what that is. Maybe it's to appreciate your body a little bit more. Maybe it's to avoid a bigger accident that would have happened closer to our wedding and then you really would have been in trouble. Like there's a reason that this is happening and you got to look for what that reason is because it's happening for you, not to you. And if you start filming your tonal workouts from the Cayman Islands, we'll know why. And the tech bill didn't quite go away. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I want to give folks. Cayman Islands are beautiful, by the way. I've been there. 
<laughs> I want to give folks, or Switzerland, I don't know, you choose. But I want to give folks an opportunity to ask some questions if they have some. So um, if you have any questions, I think we had some come in about affirmations and visualizations that we covered. But if you have more questions, please leave them in the chat. And I do want to reiterate the structure of the book club for anyone who's just joining. Um, we'll start it with obviously a book. Uh, for the next book, you're going to get to vote. I'll put the book, I'll put the, the poll out about a week before we start. So the last week in January is when we'll poll for the first week of February. So you'll have time to order it. I swear with Amazon these days, it comes in a matter of hours. <laughs> um, but if you can get it from your local bookshop, please do that. Or some people are downloading them on Kindle too. Um, the audio book is great. I like the audio book. I'm not, I can't, uh, I, I learn better when I have like a tangible thing in my hands. Um, but yeah, so a week before you'll, we'll pull the book, you'll get the book. And then sometimes we'll do a kickoff like this tunnel talk depends on the book. Um, if not, we'll still do our weekly check-in threads while I'll ask you some questions about the first third or first fourth of the book. And then the second and the third and then the fourth depends how many, how the calendar lines up for how many Mondays there are. And then at the end of the month, we will do a zoom call roundup where I'll get to hear from you and everyone will kind of share their ideas and opinions about about the book and how it impacted them. Um, and that'll be really fun. I really enjoyed the Zoom calls where um, I get to see you guys and it's not just me. So let's see if anyone has any questions. Um, somebody wrote in the chat that they can't look at social media or news before starting their morning routine. And I cannot emphasize that enough. Do not look at those things before you start. I'm reading a book now, which is great. I think it's called The Happiness Advantage. And one of the things the author talks about in that book is when you look at news, which is obviously going to cause an, an emotion in you, right? They want you to stay on whatever that news channel is and keep consuming. That's why the news skews so far by us. I've seen statistics that show that there's up to 17 negative stories for every one positive story in the news. So they're trying to incite this reaction in you that's very negative. And when that happens, you your range of emotions shrinks down to fight or flight. That's it. Your emotions shrink dramatically. And they've done so many studies on this where when they incite that that sympathetic response of people, that fight or flight response, their creativity goes down. Their obviously their positive outlook goes down. They begin to think of themselves more as victim. Their options begin to shrink. All these things shrink to just a very range of very negative emotions, fight, flight, that's it. But when you're in a more uplifting mood, when you're more positive, all of a sudden creativity is there. Your problem solving ability just ignites. Like when I was upset about my taxes, my problem solving was like, reach out to my accountant, freak out. Oh my God, pay it or not. But then when I just got myself in a better mindset, it was, okay, I can figure this out. What's the next thing? How do I do it? All of a sudden I got creative. I was able to problem solve and then I figured it out. So I can't emphasize that enough. No news, no social media, none of that stuff before you do your morning routine. Unless it's the official tonal community. Anyway, um, <laughs> Julia asked what chapters she needs to have read by Monday. We're gonna the questions I'm gonna pose to you in the thread are from the first three chapters. There's about ten chapters, so we're just breaking it down into thirds. Um, and yeah, but everyone's reading the book at their own pace. Um, so don't worry about it. If you finish the book, that's awesome. If you're a little behind, that's okay too. Just um just read as much as you can. Um, we're we're gonna get through it. It's not it's not long. It's not super intense. Um, the yeah, the questions will be from the first three chapters, and then um, someone also said, oh, Kyla says she wishes we were two weeks before. You know, Kyla, we can make that happen. I can get the next the February book out to you two weeks before. Yes, I will do that. And um, Jessica said, thank you for doing this and bringing all of us toner owners together as a community. I love the tonal and wants to be healthy, happy in body and mind. Yes, Jessica, that's exactly why we're doing this. We've got it down, healthy physical bodies on tonal. We, we've got the tools for that, but it's about more than that. It's about using the strength that we build on tonal off of tonal out into the real world, strengthening our bodies and minds and spirits. And that's what this community is all about. And so I'm glad that you recognize that and that you're joining in for the book club. Um, any other questions? Yeah, there is a question. Somebody said, when one person, uh, how do you handle this when one person in your house is a news hound, but you'd prefer to avoid it? So what's really fascinating is whenever somebody tells me something that's like bad, like bad news, or they tell me something, um, me and Anya have talked about this quite a bit, like if she's out on the trip enjoying dinner with her friends or she's on vacation somewhere and I text her something bad, 
You have to ask, why am I sending her that message? So why is somebody telling you this bad news? What are they trying to incite? Or what are they trying to do for to you? And when you turn that around and ask them, hey, why are you telling me this right now? Is it just to share? Usually it's going to be because they want you to feel how they're feeling, which is upset or angry or something else. So when you think about that, you kind of flip the script down around on them. They're like, oh, yeah. And then they realize kind of why they're doing it, which is not a good thing. So you can go that route and ask them why it is that they're trying to do this. And then just honestly be honest with them and say, hey, I'm trying to do this morning routine where I'm trying to avoid the news for right now. So whatever it is that you want to consume, go ahead. But just don't share it with me in the morning and we're going to be just fine. Or you can try the education route, which is which you could show them the research and the data. Data shows that news stories can produce feelings of PTSD, same symptoms as PTSD, the same as veterans coming back from war, you can feel from watching the news. When you break it down like that, I mean, why would you do that to yourself? Why would you inflict that on yourself first thing in the morning? It just doesn't make any sense. It'll be there later in the day. Unless you're a hedge fund trader, you're a politician, or you're literally a news anchor, you should not be cons consuming the, the news in the morning. And I think that goes back to what we talked about is planning out your day with yourself and your partner or your loved ones or your family and saying, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to spend my time doing this. Um, I can help with X, Y, and Z afterwards or get it done the night before. Um, can you handle this? Maybe it's that give and take and maybe set some boundaries around like, I don't want to hear about anything like that until maybe 9 a.m., 10 a.m., <laughs> 8 a.m. depends on your morning miracle. But just have those conversations and plan ahead for those things that those curveballs that we know are going to happen and they're going to come at us. So I hope that helps answer your question, Steph. Uh, Susan? And I think that was, yeah, <laughs> noise canceling headphones. Yep. Um, Kyla. I have those and they're fantastic. The Bose ones, yep. boom, they will silence Bad everybody ones. out. And then you can turn on whatever music that gets you excited. And trust me, I've been on planes, babies crying. You don't even hear it. Nothing. Love it. Love it. Use those all day long. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much, Jackson, for talking about the Miracle Morning with us. I'm really, really grateful to you for introducing me to this book. It has been a game changer for me, and I hope that the community loves it as much as we do. I, I know they will. They're going to love it. It's going to it's gonna change lives. Um, what we're already doing on Tonal, it's just going to amplify it. So grab your copy if you haven't already. It's not too late. Again, thank you, Jackson, for being here and sharing your story with us. Always of course. for to have your energy and your insights uh, in the community. We really appreciate you. I love this book. So it was a pleasure. And for anybody that starts this, like start it small. The first day is not going to be life changing, but it's the consistency, just like working out on your tonal. You didn't do one workout and then you dropped 30 pounds and added 50 pounds of muscle. No, it takes time and consistency. Yeah. is where you're going to get those big wins. You do five, six, seven days in a row of your five minute morning routine, you're gonna be like, whoa, I, I'm starting to really notice a big difference here. And that's where you're gonna get it. So start really small, so small you can't fail, and then consistently do it. And if you do those two things, you are gonna be setting yourself up for a fabulous, fantastic and productive day every day. I can't wait to hear about everyone's success on the 28th when we do our Zoom call. And I'm going to create that event invite so you all know exactly when to have the book read and have tried the morning miracle. Bye. Um, join us next week. I am chatting with Josh Dixon. Have you seen him, Jackson? He's incredible. He's an incredible athlete. He was. A yeah, I have seen him. I saw. Didn't he do like a Facebook thing or an Instagram thing with Paul at some point? Yeah, I, no, I think he did. Uh, he, yeah, was it Pablo or Paul? I can't remember, but he definitely did a virtual yeah. workout with one of the coaches. And I mean, it, just Google everyone, go Google Josh Dixon gymnastics and just watch some of his floor routines. He was a former Team USA gymnast. It's insane. His athletic ability is incredible. And so we're going to be talking with him next week about how he uses tonal to stay fit now after gymnastics, um, how strength got him through some really tough times, some times of adversity through his gymnastics career and a lot more. So be sure to tune into that next week, Wednesday at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Thank you, Jackson. As always, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, Kate. And uh, maybe I should have a sign off like, be your strongest. <laughs> oh, you should definitely get a sign off. Mine is obviously actions, the difference between dreaming and succeeding. 
So yeah, you should definitely have one. I don't know what the, the Kate sign off is, but you got to work on it. If you have any suggestions for what the Kate sign off should be, put them in the comments. And for now, I'll just say good night and I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Turn on that tomorrow during your morning routine. <laughs> I definitely will. All right. Thanks, Jackson.